Hello friend, welcome to the Java puzzle. Today we are going to discuss about the 12 factor methodology in microservices with Spring Boot. The starting point for your cloud native app. So we have building a cloud native app for a while and there are some common set of principles for the cloud native development, which is developed by the introduced by one of early adapter Hiroko. Understanding of these 12 factor app is very important. In fact, these are the starting point for your cloud native development. So let's see, these are the some 12 factor methodology, code base, dependencies, config, backing service, build release run, process, code binding, concurrency, disposability, day prop parity, log and admin process. So we will see one by one all 12 methodology. So first one is a code base. We usually have a multiple environment for developing, maintaining, testing and production. If we look at the following figure, we have a multiple code base for the different environment and we have to maintain all these for different environment. It is a cumbersome to merge all these branches from time to time. The 12 factor app suggests that we need to maintain one code base for all environment with one code base we don't have to recompile and package the application for each environment any unique environment specific thing related to the code base should leave outside of it so it is a build once and deploy to each environment then dependencies if the code base has a dependencies those should be isolated and publish those in a some artifactory so that dependency manager like Maven or Gradle can download it while building the source code. As shown in this figure, we declare the dependency in a pom.xml and in source code. And dependency manager like Maven download all the dependencies while building the compiling and source code before deploying it into a multiple environment then config if we maintain one code base we need a place to maintain environment specific information we should have a separate configuration file for each environment in git or some repo this configuration file are pulled while building phase based on the environment that we are targeting look at this figure we are storing information like database credential web service endpoint or etc in the configuration file and pull it while building for the targeted environment so this is a config then we have a backing service so every application has some database restful web services to consume etc treat each of these as a separate resource that can be attached or detached from the app depending on the environment we should easily swap database or web services without touching the application code when we deploy the code we should easily attach or detach these services then build release and run so separate the build release and run stage in this way the only way to change the application code either initiate the new build process or roll back to the previous version so in the in build phase all the source code is compiled and packaged and referred to the build and in a release phase we take the build and combine with configuration and release it with the some versioning we usually put this release in some directory so that the release management tool take it from there and these releases are ready to run in an execution environment and at the last stage which is a run one of the release is selected and run it in an executed environment if you want to change anything in the code we have to initiate the entire build process again and that make very hard to change anything at the runtime then we have a process all the 12 factor app have to be stateless which means any information that we want to store or save has to be done with backend resource and these resources are attached to the app at runtime. Any information should not be saved in a file 
or in a runtime environment, we can conclude the app is stateless if we are able to tear down the app and get it running again without the loss of any data. Then we will discuss about the port binding. So all the 12 factor app are self-contained and run on some port in an execution environment. Some routing mechanism will take care of redirecting request to these self-contained app. Let's take one example, which is the Netflix tool, which will have all the port defined in a some configuration file and it will redirect the request based on that information. Then concurrency. Since every 12 factor app is a self-contained and stateless, we can scale these horizontally on demand basis. When there is a lot of traffic to these app, we should be able to horizontal scaling. Look at this figure. All those web apps and web services are all identically running instance and being load balanced. Then we will discuss about the disposability. So all the dual factor apps should be designed to be turned on at any time, which means disposal happen on the fly. Shutdown should be handled gracefully. In an automated deployment environment, we should bring down and bring up the app as quickly as possible. Then we have a dev broad parity. So we should keep all the environment as same as possible. This is useful because of some following reason like time. So we should move our changes from development to production as soon as possible. It is possible only because of similar environment. Then second point is the personal. All the developers are associated with the deployment nowadays because of DevOps and it would be easier if we have similar environment. And the last and third point is a tool. All the environment should use the same tool and framework to avoid inconsistencies. Right? Then the important one is a log. All the log should be saved into an external centralized repository at least in test and prod environment. And this is because when we deploy the app in a cloud, this IO operation causes bottleneck, which lead to performance issue of our application. So we should stream this log to some centralized repository like Splunk or Kibana, etc. And these tools expose some endpoint which would be called from our application to log all the data. And at the last, we have an admin process. So every application has some admin process to run while deployment. For example, database migration or some script that should execute before you run your app. All these processes should be checked into a source code repository to have consistency across environment. So what conclusion we will find out from this 12 factor methodology? All these factors are very important for our cloud native development and these 12 factor principles become a common set of principles for all cloud native applications. So thank you for watching this video. If you find this is useful, please share with your friend and subscribe my channel. Thank you.